Hey everybody, welcome back to Why Not RV. On this week's episode, I'm gonna go ahead and show you the very first few upgrades I'm doing to my brand new Airstream. Remember, if you wanna learn more and make less mistakes while RVing, be sure to hit that subscribe button, drop a like and a comment down below. I appreciate it. Thanks for watching. Now I say brand new, I just mean brand new to me. Of course, it's a 2012 Airstream, um, so we're not gonna get into that. But what are the very first few things that I'm doing as an extremely avid RVer who's been RVing for several years, who's seen all 48 states, and now is on to his fourth RV? What am I doing first? Now I already have videos on some of these in detail, so I'm just gonna go ahead and talk about what I did first. The very, very first thing I did, literally as I pulled out of the RV dealership, was add sway tabs and sway bars to my uh, trailer. Okay, I got my little sway tabs here. I just have my little hook sitting on it right now. But I added sway tabs to both sides of the tongue of the trailer um, so that I had an anti-sway setup with my truck. Now, of course, my hitch that I got for my truck is the um, air shock, or I think it's called the shocker hitch. Um, it has an airbag down there, as you can see. And uh, it makes for an extremely smooth ride between the truck and the trailer and everything coming in between. Look at, look what happens. I can't sit too low to the ground or else the animals try and jump on me. And even so, as you saw in two weeks ago video, the cat will just jump on me either way. But anyway, so first things first, the anti-sway tabs, okay? Second thing I did before I even put my landing feet down after I picked up the RV was I added RV snap pads. The RV snap pads are such an amazing, amazing little tiny device because these feet that are on this thing, these metal feet are pretty darn thin metal, okay? Um, so if you've got a little tiny piece of gravel underneath of it, you better believe you're gonna bend that piece of metal because there's just a lot of force uh, uh, of this trailer. So, you know, the snap pads get rid of that. They're, they give you a nice big thick rubber foot. I mean, it's like, it's at least an inch, inch and a half worth of very, very thick rubber. Uh, and then they snap onto your pre-existing landing feet and they stay there forever. The snap pads are so nice because like I said, no matter what environment you're in, whether you're on concrete, asphalt, grass, dirt, gravel, that now big thick rubber pad, which again, gives you a bigger footprint on your, on your uh, landing pad is so much better for uh, stability and keeping the feet lasting longer, not getting rust on them. So what I did was actually, I spray painted the feet before I put the snap pads on. That way they had a fresh coat of paint on them, no rust, now they're, now they're coated and uh, they're not gonna get in contact with any gravel or concrete to get scuffed up and uh, rust start. One of the um, easiest upgrades to me and best things for longevity is I upgraded the propane tanks. There's two 30 pound propane tanks in here. I upgraded them to 40 pound propane tanks and I added the Mopeka Pro uh, propane sensors, which again, link in the description below, both to the tanks and to the tank sensors. Tank sensors, you should always have. The tank sensors are just instant read right on your phone. You can tell how much propane you got left. Really nice, but upgrading to the 40 pound tank uh, in the Airstream with its little cavity up here was pretty easy, okay? There is a little bit of a difference. This thing does not sit all the way down on the ground anymore. It is about two fingers <laughs> high. I mean, it's like literally, you know, about an inch and a half, two inches up off. But again, it's still super, super secured, but I was able to upgrade to 40 pound propane tanks. Now doing the propane tank upgrade does several things for me, okay? Because number one, down the road, I plan on putting in an onboard generator on this thing. Um, it's gonna be mounted underneath the RV, but we'll get to that in a later date. So, um, you know, the 40 pound propane tank is gonna make the generator run longer when I do need it. Uh, again, cooking, water heater, etc. I just like to have more propane on board than necessary because why not? It just means you can be out longer. You don't need to refill as much. And the 30 pound tanks do great. But again, a quick upgrade to the 40 pounds, really not that much. And it makes a big difference for longevity. Again, this trailer I plan on having forever, not literally, but for a very, very, very long time. This is the trailer I'm gonna be using for a very, very, very long time. So these 40 pound tanks are a great investment. The third thing that I did to the Airstream as an immediate upgrade is the Volterra valve. Now, even though, uh, 
Airstream already has two Volterra valves right here for your gray and for your black. I added the Volterra valve right here because you never know if these things leak just a little bit and you go to pull this cap off and now you're dealing with a really gross mess. Um, this little Volterra twist on valve, which I will have in the link description below, um, is one of the best little devices to prevent anything from happening. Your other tanks can leak past and this is still an extra barrier um, between you and the nasty stuff. And another tiny but super, super effective little upgrade. And again, I'm going to drop a link to these on the on uh, from Amazon in the description below. But uh, these little things that are technically meant to be like replacement pieces for the Volterra system. But they're just perfect for holding your connection. See, now I got this 90 right here on the side of the RV. And I can just click it right in place. And if a dog would get out of my way, you can see they just hang right there and that's where they travel. So they never go inside. They don't contaminate anything else. I love having this type of thing. 90 degree adapters for your hose fittings. Okay, I have both for my uh, city water and for my sewer flusher. Um, but, you know, putting this 90 on here brings the pressure straight down, straight down and off. Versus when you have a hose connected to the side, it usually comes out and bends. There's a lot more leverage on that. So you're putting a lot of torque against that fitting and people break these fittings all the time and they're not very easy to replace. So again, little 90 degree elbows, drop in a, or look in the link in the description below and uh, save yourself a lot of time down the road. Now, one thing that Airstream kind of falls short on a little bit is storage capacity, right? Now inside, of course, there's a lot of cabinetry and a lot of this, that, and the third, but for hoses, electrical cords, anything outside, there's really not a whole lot of storage. So I went on Amazon and I found something that I'm going to go ahead and share with you guys. This is my first time using this product. Um, it is something I did pretty, pretty darn immediate because I wanted more storage capacity in the outside of the trailer. Let me show you what I got. Now, right now we're on a, a, a my, my driveway is at a pretty decent little um, incline. And so the rear of the trailer is very, very close to the ground. This is not a real representation of how, how much ground clearance I'll have. Now I will say I am gonna be adding the three inch lift to the Airstream. So this will be even higher up off the ground, but neither here nor there. Let me show you this little storage box. Now, again, I will put a link in the description below to where I bought this. This is supposed to be a universal-ish fit type of storage box, okay? They come in a couple different sizes. I went ahead and got the real big one. These, uh, each individual drawer is weight is rated for 100 pounds and I have two of them. And let me show you how deep this thing is. It just keeps going all the way back. Now with this extra storage, I mean, I have a ton, a ton of extra space for hoses, electrical cords, miscellaneous gear, tools. Um, I, you know, there's all sorts of things, P plumbing fittings, all sorts of stuff is gonna go inside these. Again, the access is very simple. You just pull it out like that, and then this unlocks it. You can slide it out, get into your stuff, close it back up, relatch it. It locks in place. It's not going anywhere. To me, I felt like that extra storage capacity right there was is going to be a game changer for Airstream. Um, now, this was not something that was very easy to do. The tabs didn't line up with the frame. I did have to do some custom work, which so I'm not gonna show you how I did it just because I'm not gonna recommend anyone do it to their RV. Um, you know, there's multiple different ways to, to move the tabs to get something otherwise welded onto your RV. I just used some extra aluminum bars to basically extend what I needed to the frame, but let's not get into it. Now, the next thing I added, which is also a storage device is two hose, um, whatever you want to call these, okay? Hose hose storage capacity for your, for your poop hoses, right? So I got my poop hose right in there, and I have a second one for either an extra one for long poles. There's, there's a few different options I have here. Now, again, I'm going to go ahead and put a link in the description below to where I got those devices, both the big, large pass-through, or not pass-through, but double-sided storage container, which comes in a couple different variations, um, as well as those tube, uh, whatever you want to call them, the poop, poop tube holders is what I call them. Uh, they just are super easy. Four little self-tapping screws drill up into the, into the um, underside of the RV, and then you're locked in place. Now, another uh, little, we'll say, device that I got for the Airstream, this isn't anything that's installed or anything, but it is uh, some gear that I got immediately uh, before I even left the dealership is right here. My Anderson leveling system, okay? These Anderson leveling blocks, 
Sorry, the, heck, the cat had to jump down. So these Anderson leveling blocks are really easy to just back up to. You roll up onto, and then you set the chalk for your whatever height. Um, we're we're, we're going to talk about leveling this thing in the future. But again, just another piece of gear that I got pretty much immediately. Again, link in the description below to where you can buy them. Now, of course, I you know got the plumbing situation on the outside as like an immediate thing right the both the volterra valve and the extra storage um, i have little 90s on my fresh water stuff coming in because that just reduces the um torsion i'm not really sure the right word to say but when you put a hose straight into the side of a trailer it just pulls down on that uh, fitting quite a bit versus a 90 degree the weight comes straight down it, it does not near affect it nearly as much um, but you know, so I got water in, water out. Now, what about electrical? Did I do anything to electrical uh, with the RV as like an immediate thing? The short answer is no, I didn't get anything immediately uh, only because I brought the trailer straight home and I already have several products that some companies have sent me um, for EMS devices, surge protective devices, etc. cetera. So, uh, and it's going through the Victron MultiPlus. So the Victron MultiPlus is gonna clean up any kind of uh, poor AC signal. I don't want to get too deep into that stuff right now. I have a separate video, which I will have a link in the description below on surge protectors versus EMS devices and what's better and what's better for you. Uh, and I have a lot of videos coming out on some reviews of those products that a lot of companies have been sending me. So stay tuned for that stuff. All right, everybody, that's it for this week's video. Like I said, I just kind of wanted to give you a quick rundown of some of the very, very first few things that I did uh, to the Airstream, little upgrades, minor things, but that make a lifelong difference of happiness when you're using the trailer and using things. So again, just my take of what I use, not to be uh, mistaken for what you should do, okay? Everyone is different. Everyone has different needs, wants, and desires out of an RV and what you're using it for. So make sure you're getting stuff that's right for you. Thanks for watching Why Not RV. We'll see you next time. Bye.